the Wild West, thanks to the Hollywood movies, is a kind of embodiment of romance, the ongoing and heroic struggle for survival with the local American tribes, and brave and selfless cowboys and beautiful ladies before whom even the most bitter criminals bowed their heads. In the actual truth, nevertheless, the pictures created by talented filmmakers are oftentimes very, very far removed from reality. And in fact, instead of romance, the Wild West was more of a representation of the kind of life that is considered plain nonsense today. Dirty and sometimes creepy customs and entertainment, cruelty and violence. Today, let us tell you about the Wild West and without hushing up anything. You're watching Flip Side of History, and we continue our episode. An enemy scalp to earn money on. The local Native Americans were called redskins by the settlers because of the color of their skin. Accordingly, there has long been a stereotype that it was the Native Americans who attacked the settlements of the colonial settlers in order to plunder, kill, and capture prisoners. And, of course, the main proof of a warrior's valor was the scalp of an enemy, often a living one. But in reality, the originators of this truly dreadful process were not natives at all, but the settlers themselves. The indigenous population was quite well developed in cultural terms. In terms of cleanliness and hygiene, they were, strangely enough to many, an upgrade over the white-skinned colonists. Moreover, the Native American tribes were not as highly militant as the cinema portrayed them to be. They favored living in peace and harmony and were more engaged in trade than war. As proof, at that time no one was surprised by mixed marriages, such as a cowboy and a Native American young woman, or Native American young men and a white woman. The practice of scalping the enemy itself originated with the emergence of a stratum of workers, the so-called bounty hunters. In an effort to clear some territory of native tribes, local authorities often initiated a blatant policy of genocide against the Native Americans. And so as not to waste the army's strength, they hired men to work for them, paying them about $25 for each killed redskin. It was not bad money at the time, so there was no shortage of volunteers. But how to convince an employer that you killed about a dozen Native Americans, since there is supposed to be any proof of that? You needed physical evidence. That was the scalp of the deceased. And only after the whites, over time, the Native Americans themselves adopted this tradition, and the scalp of a murdered white man became one of the offerings to the local gods. This was demonstrated especially clearly when troops came to the aid of local settlers to suppress Native American resistance. At the time, any white person in the Wild West could feel relatively secure just in a fortside fort, and he had to sleep with a pistol under his pillow so he wouldn't be scalped while he slept. But again, it was white men themselves who instigated this awful tradition. Dirty Doves Taking into account the purely male population that originally went to America in search of fortune, in the 19th century there was a great insufficiency of women in the settler camps. In the year 1850, for an instance, in California, men accounted for nearly 93% of the total population. Yet, strange as it sounds, the rights of good-hearted women who lived in formal marriages were frankly non-existent. For another example, a woman had no right to own any property. But ladies of easy virtue, on the other hand, had so many rights and freedoms that women could not even dream of much later, in the first half of the 20th century. This was due to the tremendous shortage of the beautiful gender in the settler colonies. It must be said that women earned quite a lot. For some comparison, in the mid-19th century, an ordinary worker received about $100 a month, a bank clerk about $125, but a prostitute starting from $300 and above. With this kind of revenue, women of easy virtue were able to achieve, in fact, unprecedented rights and freedoms. In Helen, two dozen banking credits were granted against real estate, and all 20 of them were obtained not even by men, but by women and they were called by any means dirty doves, painted ladies, women of the night, and other no less romantic phrases. And no wonder, obviously, that many women, simply to obtain rights and freedoms, willingly became ladies of easy behavior. The blossom of such nominally a profession came in the beginning and middle of the 19th century. Later, when the number of women increased, the status of dirty doves declined sharply. They had to work either in special institutions or through specialized people, and their lifespan was rather short. If a woman did not die at the hands of an enraged client or die of disease or tuberculosis, still after losing her looks, her boss would throw her out into the street, where the poor woman would die in impoverishment. Crimes and Penalties 
The levels of crime in the Wild West were absolutely unbelievable. In California, 1 in 72 people were killed, and the safest state, Oregon, could brag that it had only one homicide in 208 people at the time. It is not so surprising then that the farmers or cowboys or locals themselves not relying on the law, which by and large did not exist, ensured their own safety by their own means. In settlements, towns and forts, either so-called militia squads were created or locals periodically banded together to punish outlaws. The story that captured bandits were allegedly escorted to major cities for trial was just a myth. No one was going to be ceremonious with criminals at all, and they were usually punished on the spot in various ways. And no mercy, much less any ethics, was ever applied to the criminals who were caught. At best, the criminals were hanged in front of the entire town, and at worst, they were executed rather savagely. The more crimes a crook committed, the last chance he had of an easy death. History has also recorded the case of how the body of a captured murderer was turned into souvenirs. First, the locals hanged the bandit, then the skin was peeled off his body, which was dressed and cut into pieces, creating a limited edition collection of rather gruesome souvenirs. And this criminal, we have to note, was still a lucky one. A paradox, but it was much more convenient for the criminals to fall into the hands of the official authorities, who would simply inhumanly hang the defendant after the trial. If again the criminal fell into the hands of local residents, no one could guess what the fate awaited him. Due to the diversity of the immigrant population, each of them had a memory of the killing traditions used in their own country. Therefore, the murderer could be staked if there was a tree, stoned or even burned or quartered. But even going to an official prison frequently could not guarantee the criminal a soft and humane death in the news. More than one time local residents, deciding that it was too long to wait for a trial and sentence, attacked prisons, dragged the criminal out and administered justice themselves, paying no attention to the law or to virtually anything else. The most humanized punishment out of all if there was an insufficient proof of guilt was the expulsion of the accused from the city. The fate of such a person, often a guiltless one, could be unenviable. Unless he succeeded in making it to the next island of civilization, he might die from starvation at the hands of outlaws or become a victim of wild animals or some violent group of Native Americans. The Intolerance Those who proclaimed a religion other than the one prevalent in the town or city were considered second-class citizens. For one example, a Catholic or Jew in a Protestant town was considered inferior in status, so the likelihood of this person's death was extremely high. Corruption and the Ricketeer Service Many officers of the law, in this case sheriffs, who received a mere pittance as their official wages, took bribes for any service and sometimes committed crimes themselves. There was a famous case when Sheriff Henry Newton Brown was ordered to catch a bunch of thieves, except that the sheriff and his sidekicks robbed the bank themselves instead. Besides, sheriffs were the pioneers of racketeering, offering saloons, inns and other establishments perceived protection for a handsome fee. In real life, therefore, the sheriff was the last resort to which locals could turn for protection. For the most part, they dealt with crime themselves or turned to the detective agency of the infamous Pinkerton. The Gracious Gunfights The well-known duels of cowboys are also nothing more than a beautiful fiction. In fact, most duels were the result of drunken disagreements in taverns, and during duels there was no honor at all. One of the parties could shoot first at any moment at will, or even just shoot him in the back. Finally, friends could also come to the duel, and then outright chaos erupted, in the essence more like a minor war. Thank you for watching our episode. Subscribe, leave a like and expect more videos on flip side of history. Apart from that, watch our other videos on the channel.